Quitting vaping, quitting smoking, or quitting using nicotine, despite what Alan Carr has to say in his book, The Easy Way to Quit Vaping or The Easy Way to Quit Smoking, just is not that easy for some people. And there's a very good reason why quitting nicotine for some individuals is a major struggle and a major problem. And in today's video, we're gonna pick apart some of the flaws in Alan Carr's book, The Easy Way to Quit Vaping. I'm gonna talk about the reasons why nicotine is so hard for some people to quit. And then I'm gonna offer some solutions to each of those problems. Now, before I start picking apart this book, I do wanna say a quick disclaimer. I would highly recommend reading it. Alan Carr's book, The Easy Way to Quit Smoking, was actually one of the first books that got got me into my path of quitting a bunch of different substances, weed, nicotine, adult media content, energy drinks. So although I'm going to pick it apart, I do want you to to get a copy of this book and you can find it linked in the video description. Now, if you've ever read Alan Carr's book before, what he basically does is he takes either smokes or vapes and he says there's essentially no benefit to vaping. There's no benefit to smoking. And the analogy that he uses is putting on a tight shoe only to come home after a long day and take the shoe off and say, ah, I feel a lot of relief. And basically what he claims is the only reason you smoke or vape is to satisfy the cravings of nicotine. So here I am vaping or smoking. I become stressed and anxious throughout the course of the day when I'm not vaping or smoking. I then vape or smoke again, i.e. consume nicotine, and suddenly I feel a lot better. So the very thing that's causing the problem is being viewed as the solution to the problem. And obviously, this sounds insane when you put it that way. And Alan Carr's book does a phenomenal job at dismantling any of the perceived benefits that come along with smoking, vaping, or consuming nicotine products. Now, there's a huge flaw with that, especially in today's world of social media. You have major influencers, Dr. Andrew Huberman, Gary Brecka, you have uh, Joe Rogan, uh, Tucker Carlson, all these people talking about the benefits and their pleasurable experiences with the consumption of nicotine, whether it's in the form of a pouch, in the form of a cigarette, in the form of a vape, if you take the case of Andrew Tate or Brad Leela in the form of a cigar, and you have a lot of people now coming out and saying, wait a minute, there's a lot of science supporting nicotine when it comes to memory, when it comes to cognitive function, when it comes to enhanced focus, even to an extent motivation and other things like that. And this is a major problem if you're trying to quit using a method like the easy way because you're reading this book and it's telling you that there's no benefits to nicotine, but you're sitting there smoking your cigarette or uh, having a, a, a dip of tobacco and you're saying, you know, I understand what I'm reading in this book, but I'll be damned. I'm pretty sure I'm more focused. I'm pretty sure I'm actually a little calmer. I'm pretty sure there is a benefit. And this becomes very, very tricky. And I would actually argue for that person, this becomes very dangerous because they read a book like this, they're experiencing real life benefits of nicotine. And they're saying, oh my gosh, quitting isn't easy for me. I must be different. I must be unique. And for that reason, I'm never going to be able to quit. All the people that have had success with Alan Carr's book are lucky. I'm just not as lucky as them. I'm different. It's never going to work for me. And I work with people. I've worked with a lot of people who fall exactly into this space. Now, let's break this down a little bit, okay? And this video is kind of long, so I really hope you bear with me because you're going to take a lot away from it if you do. Why are there these benefits of nicotine? And I want to emphasize something. Nicotine, when used in moderation, does have these benefits. When used in moderation. Now, in a moment, we're also going to talk about the delivery mechanism of nicotine. Cigarette, vape, zen pouch, traditional chewing tobacco, snus. We're going to talk about all that. Why nicotine, though? Nicotine enhances our focus and it enhances our working memory and cognition. Now, why does it do that? 
Every time you consume nicotine, it prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine in your brain. And acetylcholine is one of these kind of neurotransmitters that's responsible for memory and focus and learning. So nicotine does have that positive benefit. Nicotine also stimulates the production of norepinephrine, which also has the benefit of providing us with temporarily enhanced focus and alertness. Now, norepinephrine also enters our body into a state of fight or flight response. And when you're doing that all day long over and over again, eventually it can lead to burnout and long-term decreased focus. Now, again, with moderate use of nicotine, you're also going to get the stimulation of dopamine. Dopamine is that neurotransmitter that not only makes us feel good, but it's responsible for motivation, particularly our motivation to repeat a behavior over and over and over again. Now, if I had a large task that I wanted to complete at work or a boring task, that would sound like a very good drug when it comes to completing that task. It's going to give me a hit of noradrenaline. It's going to prevent the breakdown of acetylcholine. And it's going to give me a hit of dopamine. It's going to motivate me, help with my focus, and give me a little bit of that extra boost to get through X, Y, or Z task, whether it's a physical task or a psychological, a mentally draining task, going through all your emails, writing a book, whatever it may be. Nicotine in the form of a cigarette, a vape, a dip pouch has those benefits, and we shouldn't deny that. Although I've made videos talking about how addiction has no benefits in the long run, I don't deny that nicotine does have benefits, and I've said that before. I've said there was a point in my life, particularly in college, where I think I was better off with the substances than I was without. My parents were going through a divorce, uh, college was extremely stressful, and my will to continue was almost none. It was honestly drugs that were stringing me along throughout that process, okay? But then eventually the negatives of that caught up to me and, you know, we had to make changes. All right, now back to nicotine. Let's bring it back. So I work with a lot of people and I think one of the main things that people overlook is that there, there are many things that could provide us with these benefits, right? Getting a better night's sleep gives us those benefits of enhanced focus, more energy, more motivation. Self-care, taking care of ourselves, gives us a hit of dopamine. And when we're smoking cigarettes, we're not taking care of ourselves. So that's actively, in some sense, depleting dopamine, right? When we exercise, whether that's going outside for a walk, picking up weights, doing yoga exercises, doing um, self-hypnosis or meditation, all of that, is ways to enhance cognitive function, boost dopamine levels, and, and give you many of the same benefits as nicotine. Now, that's stuff that involves lifestyle modification. Eating healthy would be another thing. Staying hydrated would be another thing. Not procrastinating would be another thing. Working on a hobby that you enjoy, going after the pursuit of a goal that you want to see accomplished. All of those things are going to give you the same benefits as nicotine. And this is often overlooked. People talk about, oh, look at how nicotine enhances working memory and it produces dopamine and stimulates noradrenaline. Yeah, a lot. Of, you know what? When I film a YouTube video and I sit here and I edit the YouTube video and I upload it and we wind up uh, booking coaching calls or people join our groups to help them quit or they buy our, our products that help them quit, guess what? I get all the same benefits that I used to get of nicotine just in a form that's a lot more healthier for me. And there's many things in my life that that could apply to. Now, beyond lifestyle modification, there is also supplementation particularly KSM-66 ashwagandha. This supplement stimulates adrenaline, norepinephrine. It prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine, and it enhances dopamine production, especially when combined with something like N-acetylcysteine, which is exactly what we put into the Kick It Crave Less Chewing Gum. Gives you the benefits of nicotine without nicotine. Now, Let's move on from supplementation. There's also Hooper Enzyme A. There's Alpha J GPC. There's many supplements out there that do similar stuff. Creatine monohydrate is being shown to be great when it comes to brain health and when it comes to combating depression. Okay, many supplements on the market that can help do the same things as nicotine without the harmful side effects of nicotine, which 
are vasoconstriction to the brain, decreased blood flow to the brain, decreased blood flow to your muscles, decreased blood flow to your joints. And that's just nicotine. When abused in large quantities, decreased dopamine production. When abused, decreased focus because then all you can focus is on nicotine. So then you wind up having to consume nicotine 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or you can't focus on anything without it. So when it's abused, it, it, it has the opposite effect. It really does become very detrimental. And then in that case, like Alan Carr says, there really is very little to no benefit. Let's say, though, someone quits using nicotine for a period of time. They, they give quitting a, a valiant effort, and they do all these things. They modify their lifestyle. They take supplements. They try our products, and they have some success. But they come around after 90 days, six months, a year, and they say, you know what? I miss nicotine. I wish I still had nicotine in my life. But let's say they used to smoke cigarettes. I think we can all agree smoking cigarettes is a very bad idea. Even cigarette companies will tell you it's a bad idea. All right. Now let's say the person vapes. I think we can all agree vaping probably isn't great. And the research coming out on it at a very rapid pace is explaining that. It does not look good, particularly for the disposable vapes that are largely unregulated. 90% of them are coming over from China. There's a lot of knockoffs on the market. There's a lot of very, very, very close replicas to the real vapes. Juul, a lot of people don't know this. When Juul was popular before the government wiped them out, they were in the process of suing like 23 Chinese counterfeit companies distributing to their suppliers in the U.S. So the, the fake market is crazy on this stuff. Anyway, Anyways, so if you smoke or you vape, I think that's that's bad. And I think the negatives are going to very quickly outweigh the benefits of it. But if you want to have nicotine in your life, well, what do you do? You can look at other forms. You can look at Nicorette gum. You can look at Nicorette sprays. You could look at nicotine pouches. Now, I'll say this. Personally, and a lot of people that we work with call us because they are having bad experiences with products like Zen and on pouches. And a lot of people who are working with, I will admittedly say, they are consuming them in very large quantities, a tin a day, two tins a day, six milligrams, two six milligrams, three six milligram pouches at a time. Or they're using snus products, okay, that are very, 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 very high concentrations of nicotine, like 60 milligrams of nicotine per pouch, 150 milligrams of nicotine per serving, like crazy high amounts. That's typically who's having a problem. But it's rare that someone who chews tobacco or uses a product like that moderately is calling our offices because the reality is they're probably not having that many complications from use. So they don't have a large motivation to want to quit because it's not harming them in the same way that cigarettes were. It's not harming them to the same degree that vaping was. So there are people who consume nicotine in moderate quantities who are satisfied with their use, who have no qualms about it. And I'm, I'm saying this because there's a lot of people who will be stuck smoking cigarettes forever. They'll be stuck consuming disposable vapes for the rest of their life. And the outcomes of that look very, very, very bad. So for that person who refuses to quit, who does not want to quit, who feels that their life truly is worse without nicotine, I want to urge you to consider looking into a form of nicotine harm reduction. And harm reduction can come in the form of chewing tobacco, particularly in the form of moist pouches. Personally, that was the form of nicotine that I had the least problems with. It caused problems. I had health complications from it. I developed osteoporosis. I developed some issues with my gums. But day-to-day -day life was not that bad for me when I was addicted to that as compared to cigarettes or when I was vaping all day long. I was able to moderate my use probably because I didn't want to walk around with a dip in my mouth all day long because I'm a working professional. That's when I personally moist tobacco pouches had the least complications from. Vapes felt terrible. Cigarettes felt terrible over time. Zen pouches, snus pouches for me. It wasn't Zen at the time I was addicted. It was under a different brand name. But I did terrible with those, spiked my anxiety like crazy, felt awful with them, 
and I think a lot of that had to do with swallowing the the juices being produced from the nicotine pouch. I don't know for sure, but I had an awful experience. But I'll say this. For people that don't have an awful experience, that used to smoke, that used to vape, this is presumably going to be a very good form of harm reduction and potentially a reasonable way for the individual that wants to keep nicotine in their life to do so. And I by no means encourage that, right? My channel is all about quitting. But it would be wrong of me not to address some of the flaws in even some of my past videos on nicotine, some of the flaws in the books that I recommend. It would be wrong of me to deny people that there is actually some benefit because then I'm going to make them feel like they're crazy when they can't quit. And I don't want to do that. And that's why we're having this conversation today so in-depth about nicotine. Now, I would also encourage you to check out our product, Kick It, Crave Less Chewing Gum. Or just go online and buy an acetylcysteine and KSM 66. But we're the only people in the world that make it in a chewing gum. There's, there's going to be people who absolutely want to quit. And that's the category that I fell into. And I'm glad I did. My life was overall enhanced by quitting. Some people may not feel that way. And if you smoke cigarettes, if you uh, vape, I, I would strongly urge you to look into a form of harm reduction, whether it's nicotine replacement therapy products or something like a nicotine pouch or a moist tobacco pouch or something like that, where the risk is far lower. The risk of mouth cancer with a moist tobacco pouch or a snooze product is significantly lower than with cigarettes. Cigarettes, alcohol, and HPV, those are the top three causes of oral cancers, not tobacco pouches or uh, snooze products or nicotine pouches, okay? Not saying you won't have other health problems. You probably will, but Way, way less than smoking, okay? And I think we're going to see that play out in the future. Here's the other challenge to all this, why it's hard to quit. Because nicotine is fast acting. Yes, going for a walk gives you dopamine. Exercise gives you dopamine. Picking up a new hobby or new habit gives you dopamine. It, it stimulates those same pleasure and reward circuitry in our brain. But those things require effort. And ultimately, that's a very good thing that those things require effort. But they're not fast acting like a hit of nicotine. So I can sympathize with the mother who has three or four children, constantly stressed. Maybe this is a single parent who doesn't have the time or the means to do all of those things. Find a new hobby. Go out for a walk You know, in the morning and the evenings attend a talk therapy session for an, uh, an hour or two each week. I can sympathize with the business person who enjoys nicotine because they can, they can have nicotine and they can just get right down to business. They don't need to go do all these other things to get that same stimulation that nicotine will provide them with, right? I understand that from a Joe Rogan standpoint, an Alex Hermosi standpoint who claims to use nicotine patches to help him focus, whatever. I get it. And I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to dispute that because it's fast acting. Now, I would argue, I would argue deep breathing can be fast acting. I would argue that. I would argue to some extent exercise can be fast acting. You could argue that a cold shower is like moderately fast acting. It, it's a little more effort to go take a cold shower. I could definitely say that supplementation, especially in the form of a chewing gum, and I'm not the only one, like there's uh you know, our gum, which I think is the best, but you also have neuro gum that contains caffeine. Ours doesn't have any stimulants, but that's another option. You have Joe Rogan's, uh, you know, there's a lot of supplements in the nootropic space. Let's put it that way. You could try those things. Those are very fast acting products that are good alternatives to nicotine that are safer alternatives to nicotine. So even though I sympathize with those people, I would still say there's probably better alternatives available out there that are nicotine-free, that you're not going to get the side effects from. And that's ultimately where I stand when it comes to helping people. But I wanted to make this video to let you know that you're not crazy and that I do sympathize with why quitting is truly not easy for some people, despite my recommendation of Alan Carr's books and despite the millions of people that he's successfully helped quit nicotine products. And I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about 
uh, harm reduction because in the case of nicotine, I think it's a, a very real thing. You know, people can live pretty prosperous lives despite nicotine addiction when it's not in the form of a vape or a cigarette, in my opinion. Definitely not in the form of cigarettes, maybe with some vapes, but I think it's unlikely. I think people are going to be in big trouble with vapes a few years from now. I think less trouble when it comes to nicotine replacement therapy, like even nicotine mints. You have Jones products. You have Knickknack, Nicotine, Knickknack Naturals, Nicotine Mints, right, which are great products out there on the markets. Um, and this is coming from a guy. They're my competition, right? They're my competition. But if you want something nicotine-free, check out our product. So anyways, I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it gives some clarity. Hey, look, if you need help quitting, check out our Addiction Mindset School community where we go live and we talk about these things and we talk about alternatives and we help people quit. I have a bunch of videos uploaded in there and that's a chance for you to come in, interact with me in a group setting and get your questions answered. You can find that right in the stand link below. I hope this helps. It kind of turned into a ramble, but let me know in the comments. Did I did I ease some of your concerns? Did I make you feel better? Did I did I resonate with some people who are really struggling to quit? Cuz I get it. I was I was that I was that person. Okay. Talk to you guys later.